Every single year, the Richmond Tennis Association, or the RTA, puts on a tennis event for the Richmond City. It's basically anyone who's in Richmond and the surrounding areas can play in this open tournament with an open style. There's also a 40 and overs division, but it's always a good time for the spectators and for the players. And everyone just hangs out, drinks, and watches some really, really good tennis. This year, I made it through my first round match, 6-3, 6-0. And then I had to play the doctor himself. You guys know him, you guys love him, David Reed. This is a quarterfinals match. I was the eight or nine seed, and he was the four seed. So I hope you guys enjoy this, and let's get into it. So starting from the beginning, you know, David and I, whenever we play, it's always a chess match. You never really know what the other person's gonna do because we play each other so often. So, my usual patterns, I honestly have to like flip them because he knows what they're going to be and I know what his are, but then it's like, is he expecting me to just go the usual pattern or if I mix it up, is he expecting me to mix it up? Those are the challenges that I get when I'm playing David here and you'll see like right off the bat, I'm going to try to approach to his forehand and because he, he knows that I usually am going to approach to his backhand. And that's where you see the chess game start to play out. What is each of us going to do? So, you know, 15-30 here, need a good serve. Try to approach to the forehand there, right? Boom, makes me pay. And I look at him like, okay, David, that's what we're gonna do. If you guys haven't seen that TikTok, it's on my Instagram and TikTok, you guys should go follow that. But see there again, approaching to his forehand, didn't really work out for me. Boom, get broken right away. So now I'm starting, you know, down a break. Not the best position to be in when playing David since he does have a really good serve. Anybody who's played him before knows this. Good flat serve to start it. But the thing that David knows about me is that I like returning flat serves. So you'll see a lot in this match where he's, what a great volley right there, where he's like mostly hitting kick serves against me because I don't like to deal with that spin and my returns just aren't as strong that way. So I get a good break opportunity to start right away and kind of blow the first one 30-40 now. See if I can get back on pace. That's just a great, great forehand return. And just going neutral balls now, just neutral balls. I mean, it's really simple. You just gotta keep it neutral, keep it deep, see what your opponent's gonna give you. Give it a little, a little short there. He comes in, was able to hit a good backhand to get myself back into the point. Inside into his forehand. Oh, and that hurts. I really needed to close that volley out just a little bit wider and not let him back into the point. And see, there's the kick serve. That's really, really effective against me. These second serves are killer. Pulls me way off the court, comes in right away, and misses the low volley. I think that was a testament to my ability to keep that shot really low. So he had to hit a volley really low. But now he's got the add again. Great return, which helps me. And then I can attack. Boom. Love return points like that. I wish all of them were that clean. So now he's going to my backhand again. Thinks about coming in. Says no. And now we're back into this neutral rally. Let's see what we're going to do. And I feel like my backhand's a little stronger than his, and so I like playing that pattern. But his forehand is definitely way better than mine, so I got to be really careful when I'm hitting to that forehand side. Really wish I made that pass there. Backing down the lines are usually my thing, and he knew it too. That's why he was trying to close pretty hard. So here we go again with his game point and I miss it down to love not a great spot to be in against David Reed because now he's feeling confident you see the come on let's go he's super jumpy on his feet he's like okay I'm gonna routine Dylan here and it's tough to get down early against Reed because it's just it's just so hard to come back especially when he starts feeling good playing on his front foot what a good plus one there that's what we need to get these matches back in check we need to hit good plus ones we need to serve well so this is such a big point down, 15-30, down love two and a break. Just got to see if I can slowly get back into this point. I'm not able to, down 540 now, just rough, rough, rough. And look, you see he's swinging on all cylinders, stepping into the court, really attacking. And thankfully I was able to make him miss that volley. I think if I didn't have him miss that volley, he goes up three love right there, I think I'm in trouble. This is the approach shot, so I'm benefiting from two misses now from Reed, which is unlike him. And so I'm just trying to make the best of what I have here. Get him defensive, just going deep cross. Deep cross, not as deep as I'd like there. But he misses that, 
and I'm able to have a game point here down 1540 at one point, which is pretty big. And I hold, which is huge. But now he's serving again, and just because I held does not mean anything's over. I still need to get a break. Breaks are gonna be huge during this match. The biggest thing that I'm thinking about when playing David is just don't let him get into a groove too early. Don't let him start hitting winners. You don't make these points long. Make a lot of balls because David starts feeling good, it's gonna be trouble. It's like I was saying, if he starts playing on his front foot, it's gonna be trouble. It's kinda like that Marshawn Lynch run where he's like, could be trouble. Gave him a little baby stiff arm, could be trouble. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about, but he's dangerous when he's up. So, I mean, what I'm just basically trying to do is just make a lot of balls. I mean, when you start a tennis match, you should really just try to make a lot of balls. Get a good rhythm because your heart rate's probably going to be 20 to 30 beats higher than it usually is per minute. And, I mean, there's nerves involved, stress involved. So you really just want to try to make a lot of balls, get yourself grooved in a good match. And, man, that pissed me off because... I'm way too fast. I hate when people drop shot me. But you just want to get grooved. You want to make sure you're starting to feel good. And you don't want to just go down super early by like trying to go for winners right away. Get grooved. Make a lot of balls. Really feel the ball coming off the strings. And just get settled into the match. You know, I'm in a good spot here with little break points. But let's see what happens. And I don't think he called it. I think that ball was actually out, but he didn't call it. And there's another learning opportunity for y'all. If they don't call it, you just fist pump and move on. It's way too late for them to call it at that point. They can't, they're not on not on hard courts, you gotta call that right away. Clay, you can check the mark, but on hard courts, you just take that point and you move on. I'm pretty sure my forehand was wide there. So now we're back at two wall and now I'm feeling pretty good. I've got two games under my belt, I got a break. And I have a hold. Nothing special here. Just cross court backhands, cross court backhands. Make him miss that with a little drop route wide. Craig Morgan tells me to do that. Love my backhand up the line there. Nothing special. Just ripping backhands and making sure that we're being confident. Like that is sick. That is sick. I mean, I probably shouldn't approach his forehand, but that ball I made was insane. And after that, we're feeling good. Up 40 love against Reed, feeling good. Really hitting the ball really well. I was really impressed with my ball striking this day. I mean, picking that ball off the line right there. A little jumpy there on that forehand, 45. I served to his forehand to try to expose that backhand. Now, it didn't work because he hit a great return, but that's a common pattern that you'll see a lot. Hit to the strength to get to the weakness. I feel like I'm repeating myself, guys, but that's the tennis is not that hard. It's very simple patterns that you just gotta figure out. Then he gives me the opportunity to go back to the backhand, and this is where I want to be. And of course, I messed it up again. But then I attack the backhand again. That's my best way to attack. What? Yeah, and I'm hype. I'm hype. I attack the backhand properly. And now 3-2 up, and he's got a hold. Gotta love this. I'm gonna let this play out just a little bit here. I want to point out something that David does really well is he comes to the net when he sees that I'm returning really far back. He always knows to do it, that when I'm returning far back, he knows to serve and volley. Now, I got lucky he missed that one there. But he's coming in again because he sees me playing super far back. But he gets the hold there with a really good volley. So now we're at three all. You know what they say, the seventh game is always the most important in a set. It's usually what decides a lot of things. I mean, you guys know I usually don't have hands, but that was pretty clean, if I don't say so myself. So here we go, just trying to really just get that backhand open, but you can see he's kind of camped out over there. Finally get that backhand there. Let's just see if I just stay consistent and patient. I'm pretty sure that I do. Ah, of course not, try to go to line. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, I mean, you just just no reason to go line there. I mean, I had him in a good pattern, and instead I go up 15 all instead of being 30 love, but he gives me a free point with a missed return. So let's see if Dylan stays patient. And he missed that volley, which is kind of nuts. I think I double faulted. It's 40-30, just trying to stay patient. This game is so important and I can feel it. And he gives me an easy miss. He's getting just a little tight. So being 4-3 up is a good spot. I want to be here. Now I can play free on this return game and really just start swinging out and attacking that weakness. As you can see, I'm just kind of battering ramming it right to the bad side every single time, just making him beat me on that side. Let's move him just a little bit, see if I can expose that backhand again. Not enough. I mean, it's simple tennis, guys. It's not, there's not much to it. Just trying to make a lot of balls. I'm playing pretty far back. I mean, short guys like us, we gotta, we gotta grind like this. We gotta grind. And if we can get into the head of some of these bigger, more aggressive players, things can go in our advantage. But the thing is, we gotta start off the match solid as hell. And I think that's the only reason why I'm in this position at this point is because I started the match making a lot of balls. And I get that point after like a, I think it was like a 30 point rally or something like that, or 30 shot rally. Make a great return, come in and finish it up right away. This is a good spot to be in. I'm just making a lot of balls. That's actually a pretty impressive chip right there. Really feeling my backhand, really unloading on it, and really enjoying it. Oh, I say that? That's that's commentary jinx right there, and I duff one into the net. Horrible slice. Absolutely terrible slice. Glad I made that forehand, that wide return. That's usually a tough return. Way to come back with a better slice, Dylan. It's a way to stay low that time. We got our break point. And I'm sorry, he just missed it wide. You can see a little bit of space there. Just missed it wide. Sorry, Reed. Second serve. Great return. Now we're back into the point. Now we're back into the point. Now it's a neutral point. It's anybody's point. Who's just going to play better? Who's not going to leave the ball short? I'm attacking where I want to attack, coming in. And he misses it wide, and I get that break to go up 5-3. Huge. So big. And so now I'm serving 5-3 up. And this is where you got to remember how you're winning points. I don't know if that makes sense, but you need to remember how you're winning your points. How did you get to this position? And don't try to change the script if it's working. And I think a lot of times people will get up big and forget how they won and how they got to the situation where they're at. Did you serve and volley? Okay, well, let's keep doing that. Did you grind it out? Okay, well, let's keep doing that. But you'll see a lot of times they'll get up big, and next thing you know, they're slapping line because they're feeling good. They're up 5-2, five, 5-3. Five, they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm a big baller. I can slap line. Let's not do that. We got to remember how we got to the spot that we're in. And that's so annoying because I could have won the set right there. Two set points, second set point here. And see, that's what I'm saying right there. We got to remember how do we get up 45? Consistent tennis, not blasting backhands down the line. Just playing aggressive with that backhand. But you see, we're, we're just missing now. We're overshooting. We got a little too excited. Oh man, this break point is stressful. Just trying to make a lot of balls, trying to make a lot of balls to his backhand. See if it's going to break down. And of course, I check out, try to go down the line, and it doesn't work out for me. And I'm pretty pissed off. 4-5. So now I'm pretty annoyed. I had three or four set points, and I duffed them all. One was a net cord, so that kind of sucked. And now it's, I have to break Reed serve to hold the set. So, you know, that drop shot there was totally a nerves drop shot. I mean, I shouldn't have drop shot it there. I do that when I'm, like, not feeling comfortable. So he gave me a double fault there, which helped. So 30 all, this is pretty big. This is like deuce. Gotta play this point like a deuce point. 
which means aggressive big targets. Aggressive big targets. That's how we have to play deuce points. He gives me one out wide there. So now I have another set point here. Boom. And we do it. Dill plays, takes the first set 6 4. Guys, part two will be coming out very, very soon. Please hit the like button. Please smash the subscribe button. I'm like 3 and 100 against 3. Let me know how you think I'll finish out. All right, catch y'all on part two.